Hey all, happy Tuesday. Um, again, no Twitch tonight. No Twitch tonight because I'm lecturing in Waterloo on video game history. So I have a good excuse. I'm still involved in gaming. So again, best I know right now, um, it will be Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm going to try a different time just to see how that goes. Uh, I will confirm this absolutely for certain tomorrow. So um, it's like 90% sure right now. I just have to check a few things, but it should work. That's not what I'm talking about today. I'm just trying to do due diligence and let everybody know about the change because I know that, yeah, you get in a schedule and then you start changing the schedule. And uh, this is why I was hesitant to do weekly live content to begin with. So I'm sorry, but I will try to get back on the horse. I know this month has been goofy, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about this epiphany I had regarding some of my favorite TV shows. Um, one of my, my current favorite TV show in the whole world is a show called Forged in Fire on History Channel. Here it is. What? What is this? It is a show where, if you haven't seen it, it's really awesome. They make like historical bladed weaponry and then they test it to see if it will cut and it will kill and... It just, I love the crap out of this show. First of all, it's history. It's also like they mention video games all the time. But also, I realized another reason I love the show. And this is going to sound weird. Also, the show Night Fight, which I think is done by the same production team. But oh my God, it is freaking awesome. I love that show. It's like, like every week, a bunch of guys cosplaying cans of spam just beat on each other. And then they're all respectful and, and sportsmanlike. And that's the thing I realized I love about uh, Forge and Fire and Night Fight. There isn't the, the wrestling UFC trash talk. There isn't that sense that they're trying to brutalize each other like they are the enemy. It It is... The only healthy competition I, I see on television shows now, because it's all like this reality, like trying to screw the other person and everything like that. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like trying to lie, cheat, and steal your way towards victory. I prefer that the thing is about Fortune and Fire is it really all does come down to did you make a better knife or sword or axe or whatever than the other person? And women have won episodes. I saw I was like, woohoo! Um, because it took like a long time. But um, you know, that 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 woman who won, she was a farrier, meaning she like shoes horses. Uh, she won fair and square. She beat three dudes to do it. I've seen other women not do as well, but you know, it, it's cool. They're mainly white dudes, but that's just really like honestly based on interest. And then it is harder for women to do like the manual, like banging stuff when they have to, but it, you know, women are there. So, but what I love about the show is it's like, one of the healthiest depictions of masculinity on television because these are guys who are who are creative like they're creating works of art as as well as weapons they're creative they're they get they get emotional they talk about their families they take you into your home their homes so to speak with their home forges but there's always this it's not even an undercurrent it is the current of of respect and sportsmen like conduct and there are no losers here the judges when they have to let someone go you can see sometimes it just like pains them because they like everybody and you see the judges like instead of it being the american idol thing where the judges are like mean or like the gordon ramsay the, the judges are cheering for them like when they're gonna make a mistake like no 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 don't do that and it it's it's dudes helping mostly other dudes make cool shit and respectful and they always try even when something really sucks they th like the the end result really sucks like something fails or, or looks bad or something they find something to praise they find some sort of encouragement and like these are these are dudes who are like making things that like demolish a pig carcass in like three cuts but they're all like this is really good there are no losers here you've all acquitted yourself excellently like i'm like this, 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 this is traditional masculinity.
this is the warrior codes of days gone by. This is back in traditional systems, martial systems. This was the ideal man. And, oh my God, I love it. Like, there is nothing bad. There is absolutely nothing bad about this form of masculinity other than the tendency for some beards to get set on fire. But uh, that's kind of funny when it happens and no one really gets hurt. Um, but I just, and, and Night Fight's kind of the same way. Like, yeah, it's dudes wailing on each other. And let's face it, that's awesome. But, you know, you you see, like in the in the final, the final just passed last week. And this little guy, who was it? Uh, Ringo, Ringo, that's right. Um, he was like getting beat on by like, I forget Bam Bam and then I forget who, who the other guy was. Um, but you see him afterwards, like they're all exhausted because they're all like oxygen deprived because the carbon dioxide build up in those helms. And you see the guy go, like the little guy, help the bigger guy, you know, Ringo help Bam Bam off with his like helm and stuff like that. Th this is competition. These aren't enemies. They, they don't see the person they're competing against as bad and needing to be destroyed. It's just, I'm trying to be better than my buddy over there. Let the best man win. And we need so much more of that. We need less existential threat and more like, I just want to be the best today. And then I want to be the best tomorrow. And then I want to be the best next week. And I'm not always going to be the best, but sometimes I will. And like I said, I think this is the most healthy example of masculinity, traditional masculinity on television. It's so traditional. Guys are wearing vests with pocket change, uh, pocket chains, right? Like it, it, David Baker has his tape measure. I was always like, what's David Baker's pocket chain? It's his tape measure. I was very excited when I found that out. But, you know, th these are these are traditional dudes. It's very white. It's very male and it's compassionate and supportive and, you know, encourages and rewards tenacity and praises stick to and not giving up. And that's traditional masculinity, not this 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 freakish, cartoonish, you know, 1990s Rob Liefeld comics like deltoids have deltoids and it's a 12 pack instead of a six pack. That's not traditional masculinity. That's that's surrealist transhumanism to it's it, it definitely is surrealism. It, I talked about beefcake cinema yesterday, so I'll spare you there. That's not traditional. It hasn't been around long enough to be traditional. And comics have started to pull back from that. It sort of hit a medium in between the two right now where anatomy matters again. Um, you know, you look like, you look at the, the solid anatomical artists, like guys like Frank Cho or, or even, you know, uh, Alex Ross, though uh, he, he does like, you know, one painting a month and it's like, oh, I'm tired. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But you know what I mean? Like the anatomy is more like what guys actually look like without, Tons of roids and dehydration and human growth hormone and all that stuff, you know, like, and, and that matters. It, it matters that we call things the right things because I really don't think that traditional masculinity is a problem, quite the opposite. I think that we've lost touch with traditional masculinity because there aren't ways for men and women too, but that's not the discussion here. I've done that with women's issues before. I'm going to do it now. This is men's issues today. So there, there, are, there aren't the same opportunities for men of all ages, but especially young men, to test themselves and, and compete in a healthy, respectful, camaraderie-based way without it being a zero-sum game. And that, to me, that, that healthy competition and that camaraderie that it builds is, is the core of traditional masculinity, meaning like you see it woven through the ancient Greeks, through, you know, a lot of, of, of Asian martial cultures as well. It goes into wartime, which I talked about a lot yesterday, World War I, World War II period. This is consistent through those periods. 
right? It, it was what people thought distinguished them from the barbarian hordes, which really weren't that barbarian if you looked under the surface. But there are a lot of good things there. In fact, there's nothing about that form of masculinity that isn't good. None of that. There's nothing toxic. Because, I mean, let's face it, um, there's a nurturing quality to that form of masculinity, right? Like like the, the, the support and the it's okay to fail and the you'll get it next time, we're telling you this so you can be better. That's all, that's all, that's all nurturing. That's all caring. That's all when, when things got more ridiculous post-Vietnam, all that stuff got lost. And that's, the, it was the, it's almost like the loss, or I'll, I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say this. It is the loss of traditional masculinity of that form that has made masculinity toxic. Traditional masculinity is not in and of itself toxic. Because one of the things that traditional masculinity had in it was, and this gets tricky because you get into religious roots of, of complementarianism versus egalitarianism. Um, that form of traditional masculinity had like an egalitarian complementarianism in it. Meaning there had to be like Guys, they were in all male environments, which isn't healthy. And so they brought in these female patron, patron saints through like bomber girls and, and ship masts. And they were, they continued to just pull the feminine back in, in these like masculinized martial environments that despite the system trying to strip anything feminine out of the whole thing because oh god it's gonna be distracting these guys they kept bringing it back in no we want women we want women in our space we want to see women we want to be exposed to women we we want women around and you know if it if it wasn't just pictures of their sweetheart back home it was heaven forbid local prostitutes let's face it that's companionship as much as anything else I mean, a lot of guys in Vietnam had kids with those women. So there's, there's a lot of good in traditional masculinity. And I know you guys have been asking me to make this video for a while. It felt like the right time. I, I found the connection in. I found the way in. So hopefully this is thought provoking. Men are, are the usual suspects going to be furious at me for this, huh? But. I'm prepared to hear my facts don't fit. I'm prepared to hear I have made some error in logic. I just don't see it. No matter what, I'm going to continue to love Forged and Fire. Oh my God. I couldn't watch that show for two days over the weekend because I was touring and I was like, no, I need Forged and Fire. Like, I need it. We'll cut it. We'll kill. I need Doug Markaida. Like, oh my God, I need all this stuff. It's the best show. It's the best show. Okay. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thank you for watching my insanity.